Well, it's been six months and since I just did my review of the table saw, I figured it was time to do a review of the CNC Long Mill 3030 that I got along about the same time. And I'll start off with saying this is the kind of thing that I was thinking I would be primarily using this for. This was done with a handheld router, little engraving bits, had a 90 degree V bit, and it worked. This was my first one that I did. It's held up through my son's <laughs> backpack all year, no problem. But it's very time consuming. And as I got more and more people wanting them, it just, it wasn't feasible to be able to do those as well as work on other things. So that was my original intent behind getting this. Original intent lasted all of about five minutes once I got it. But that's pretty much where the long mill review as a CNC stops. Now I've got to review it more like a car or an automobile because there are a lot of CNC's out there and some are, are designed to be cheap, inexpensive. Some are designed to be extremely rugged. Some are designed for four by eight sheets or more. Some are designed for metals. You know, there are all sorts of different reasons to get one. And you have to start off the same way you would looking for an automobile. Are you wanting something that you can transport sheet goods in, four by eight sheets? Chances are you don't want a motorcycle. Maybe you do, I don't know, not judging. But if you're wanting to enjoy, you know, the, the, the lean and, and riding up in the mountains, you probably don't want a Prius. Maybe you do. I don't know. Again, not judging. But those vehicles serve different purposes. A truck is good for hauling things. That doesn't mean that's all it does. It just means if you're going to do it, you might want to get one. Same thing with the CNC. Are you gonna use it for industrial production with sheet goods? You wanna be able to do the full four by eight? This probably isn't the machine for you. <laughs> this will do exactly what it's built to do. And that is 30 by 30 inches. It does it, it does it well. Now you do have to change tires on vehicles. You got to change bits on this. But if you start thinking of any CNC that way, you'll understand why how this works is very important. How well a vehicle is put together is very important. But if it's not built to do the job you want to do, it's not for you. This one fit perfectly with what I wanted to do. I wanted metal rails just for the rigidity and I wanted it to be accurate. It is. This thing is solid. I've got, again, I, I said it when I unboxed it, the guys at CNC Labs did a phenomenal job on this. I have heard there have been problems. I got the touch probe and had an issue with the wire connection in here. Easy to resolve. All the problems that I've heard about were easily resolved. I was missing a couple of bolts. I didn't even let them know. It would have taken longer to let them know and get them sent than just to get some bolts down at the store. So that was on me for not letting them know. I've heard people say that they needed parts and let them know and they got them sent to them, no problem. What I will say is if you are going to get a CNC of any kind, an uninterruptible power supply is probably a good idea. When this thing loses power, 
wherever it is when it comes back on will be machine zero. Not that you can't change your zero, but machine zero is wherever it comes on. If you're in the middle of a job, especially one that takes hours and hours and hours, that can be a pain. That said, what I've got here, like I said, this is what I intended to start on. That is what I, what I started on. I took my design for that in SketchUp, ran it through, got it to Carbide Create, also did a video on that. Put it on here with some scrap wood. It cut it out perfectly. To include the initial, I've moved on to, to full names now. <laughs> Something I wasn't really wanting to do freehand. But this makes that possible and makes it a lot faster and repeatable. And that's really what this is all about. Does it make sense to move everything you do over to a CNC? No. If you're just making one of something guaranteed never to make it again I'd probably do it on the CNC because you'll make it again but if reality somehow warps and you don't have to make it again then make it however works best for you there are you know glue ups and, and putting parts together you're not going to do that on this but I have taken glue ups put them here and surfaced it and it surfaced it fine uh, moving into the G sender, which is actually what sends the commands to this machine, we made it really easy. <clears throat> but again, that's not the CNC. That is the software that tells the CNC what to do. And the key is, when this is told what to do, it does it. It does it very accurately, very repeatedly. I was doing coasters that took four different tool paths, not counting the actual cutout of the, the coaster. Four different tool paths, start with aura mask, cut one tool path, paint that section, tape over, cut again, and it got pretty detailed. All of them looked identical. All of them worked flawlessly. And that was having to come back to zero every single time. Change my tool path, maybe change a bit, go right back at it, perfect. That's what I want. I've had no problems once you get it secured to a table, make sure the table's secure and sturdy. This thing has run without issue. One gripe, maybe, that I have is with the dust shoe on, you've got a metal plate over here to the side, and that plate does stop some of your X travel. Not that big of a deal a lot of the time, but it is something to note on any CNC, where is your dust shoe mounted and how? How will that affect your full range of motion? Okay. Sticking with just the machine, I've had no problems with the control board. I'm very surprised at that, considering the amount of dust I got in here one time. It had no problem. I blew it out. We kept right on rolling. Uh, static electricity from dust collection is something you need to watch out for on any and all electro electronic components, of which this does have some. But as far as the machine working, doing what it was told to do, flawless. I've had on those coasters, I had a, I had to be within about four thousandths of an inch. And I, I can't tell you what this thing's tolerances is, are. I really don't care at this point. Maybe I knew before I bought it, maybe it made a difference then. What matters to me is actually how did it work? And those four thousandths of an inch, remember I was one layer through aura mask and then I'd paint it. If it was four thousandths of an inch too shallow, the letters didn't come out very well at all. If it was four thousandths of an inch too deep, the letters would run together because they were so small. So 
was that actually going down the four thousandths of an inch I thought it was? I don't know. It could have been three, could have been five, but it was consistent. So I'm going to go with yes, it was four thousandths of an inch, but your mileage may vary on that. I do know that it worked perfectly once I figured out what my need really was. And that's what this thing does. It will take exactly what it's told to do and do it and do it well. Now, how well did it cut through something? You're getting into the router. That's not the CNC. You can get this router, which is a Makita. You can get a DeWalt. You can change it out for a spindle, but that's the cutting part. The CNC is primarily how well does it take the instructions from an external program, in this case I use G-Sender, and move the CNC according to those instructions. Flawless. Um, everyone knows, or most people probably know, I cut these out on the CNC. I need a specific depth here and here. No problems, very repeatable. I did go in, scrap piece of wood, it's actually a panel, testing out the stars. So I made this test piece, ended up following it up with a, a full flag. Went from that to a completely different design, seeing what the software would do with the Texas flag. New parts that I've made. Star knobs have come in really handy. And this is something that I didn't think when I bought this machine that I would ever make. But this is going to be, let's see, drill holder. Now, I, I know there are a lot of people that have them. I also know that they make them out of three quarter inch plywood. I don't know if three quarter inch is just the dream, but for a drill holder, you gotta admit, drills don't weigh that much. But the strength of half inch plywood for something like this is more than enough. But it's not just that. Three quarter inch plywood takes up about half an inch on both sides. More than this does. So I'm trying to cut down on the amount of space that my tool holders need. But it's also the CNC has also allowed me this kind of design element in with it. And I'm going to be going to uh, French cleat system in this shop and that's going to come in really handy so I did find this and this this is coming handy on so far the CNC table saw joiner I don't need it on my planer it's already four inch but this does wonders for being able to hook dust, your dust collector right up to it. I've also found that if I leave my shop back hose on here and put this at the other end, connecting my static electricity problem is, lets me work when it's a little drier. Um, as far as hold downs, cam clamp. Got the cam clamp with the stop and double sided tape. Those have been the three things that I've used to hold things down. Uh, I believe it was Winston over at Carbide 3D said, you know, you're not going to mill anything if you can't hold it down. And yeah, that's very true. I actually had one come up and boy did it keep milling right along even though it wasn't in place. Um, Stuff like that you have to watch out for. But when you're looking for a CNC, what you need is for it to be sturdy enough to do things accurately and repeatable. 
and it needs to be able to communicate with the software that's going to be telling it what to do. With G Center, that part's taken care of. This thing is is sturdy, and it, again, no problems. Now, I am looking for another CNC. So the question is, will I buy this one again? And the answer is no, I won't. I can say that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I will not buy this machine again. Because CNC Labs has not been sitting back saying, cool, we made a, a long mill, people like it. We're gonna retire. They've got a new version of it that's even bigger and sturdier. <laughs> the touch probe has been improved or at least changed. I'll go with changed, I haven't used it. So the dust shoe has been changed and they now have a laser attachment. That I might do. A laser is probably the next thing I'm gonna be getting. I don't know that I'm willing to commit this to being my laser. So there are a couple of them that I've looked at online. Um, the X-Tool, the Arturo. I like the thought of having a CNC with a laser, but I also like the thought of being able to do cylindrical objects not possible on the adding it to this and i i really need the ability to have the cnc be the perfect employee doing exactly what it's told to do while i do something else which may be laser work so although they do have it i don't know how good it is but i probably will not be looking at that as my first solution for the laser but i will definitely be looking at the new MK2, Mark II, when they get up to Mark 50 and it's got nanobots, it'll definitely be on my list, but Mark II is where they're at now. And that at that price point, I really don't see how they could go wrong, especially if it's anything like this one. And I know this has gone on long enough, so bottom line, this machine's been great, you can't get it. The same company, CNC Labs, Phenomenal job on this machine. They have a new version out. Same nice price point, same features, bigger, stronger, faster, you know, whatever the six million dollar man would say. Uh, yes, that does date me, I know. But again, things to know about the CNC are somewhat limited, but very important. Part two of any CNC review, which I will be doing later, will go into the software side, which is where it really gets crazy. But so far, this thing's taken it like a champ. That's it for today. Till next time.